Hey, welcome back to 42 Strains. Yo, 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 this is Double A coming at you with... Snack Queen. Jet Dante. Andrew. That's right, that's right, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to 42 Strains. We're here with you. We hope you're here with us. Hope you have a nice bowl packed, a, a joint rolled, a blunt rolled, whatever it is that, you know... Suits your lungs the best. I have a bowl packed. A nice edible. Rude at the ready. <gasps> oh, oh my god, you guys! Oh, a nice edible, edible yes. at the yeah. ready. Thanks a for coming back, guys. Finally Ooh. ground yeah. and laid about with the finest of herbage. Chuck's already getting them turned herb, down. Herb, 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 herb. Ch- Chuck's already got them going. I need you hot. <laughs> So you guys are in for a fun episode today, as you can already tell. We've already been pre-gaming a little bit today. We're smoking on some Blue Dream. Um, we're not going to be reviewing that today or anything. Um, we're just going to have a nice little loose, free episode That was today. our first episode. Yeah, that was our very, very first <laughs> episode, if you want to go check that out. And don't forget also that that awesome song <coughs> you just heard is by Papers, the band. And you should really go check them out. They have shows in Oakland and in the Bay Area. Fuck so yeah. do check them out on Instagram and social media. Um, they're absolutely wonderful. Twitter hashtag I roll with papers. <laughs> They're pretty yes. cool. Hashtag it up, dude. <coughs> Love that song. It's called Forty Two Strains because it's our song. It's ours. We have a song. Yeah, we do. and it's not a psalm. It's not a psalm. It's, it's not a psalm. Um, so yeah, we got a bunch of fun stuff uh, in order for you today. Anyways, though, uh, one of the first things that I would like to start off with is I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to Snacks over there who has an interesting little. Reddit post or a couple of posts to go over with us today. Yeah, no, I've been actually like on Reddit a lot recently. You know, I've had that app downloaded for maybe like, oh, I don't know, fucking two years without touching it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm bored at home. I'm going to look through Reddit. (laughs) And because of TikTok always like, you know, telling me about Am I the Asshole stories, I was curious. I was like, I wonder if there's any stoner Am I the Asshole stories. And there are a number, actually. So are these as um, like obvious as they sound? Like these are just stories about like this person is wondering if they are the asshole in a certain 100%. situation. One hundred percent. Some type of okay. incident has transpired in one way or another. And you have some that are specifically related yes. to cannabis or weed. Okay, specifically awesome. Specifically for weed, where people okay. are questioning, was I out of line? Am I the asshole? And in the comments, people are very clear whether or not they think <laughs> they're the asshole. And oh, on Reddit, I'm consensus. sure. I'm sure everybody's got a nice opinion about it. Half the time, these stories are very cut and dry. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised you're even asking. Yeah, like, how was that a question? Aww. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm Sweet. hoping you, you've, you you grabbed a couple for us. I did. I grabbed two to start it off with today. Yeah, to, that's Because, awesome. I mean, I know I have my opinions, but I wanted your guys' opinions. <laughs> oh, we'll give them. I know you Oh, will. we'll give them. I'm excited. Uh, I grabbed a short one first. This was the very first one. If you just, like, type in, am I the asshole? Or, you know, like, the abbreviation, A-I-T-A, stoner. This is the very first one that pops up. It says, am I the asshole stoner dilemma? And this is posted from a while ago, but it was the first thing that popped up. Uh Um, So it's very short, and it says, So I live in a frat house. Many of us smoke weed, with a couple of us owning bongs people share. My friend M's room slash bong is always used as the primary smoking place, with people filing in and out all the time. M finds it hard to say no to people who want to smoke, so a lot of the times he has to face inconveniences that come along with it. He's been mad at me lately for denying people from using my bong, which indirectly sends people to his room. Am I the asshole for not allowing people to smoke in my room? Should I be more considerate for the situation he's in? What are your thoughts? No, it's your fucking room. (laughs) What the hell, dude? That is a personal problem. Yeah, yeah, that's like it's yeah. not his responsibility to to be having his room open for smoking. That's not no. that's not under his He could he could have his room off limits too and everybody could find a new spot to chill and smoke. Exactly. And like you said, he, he has a problem with saying no to people. That mm-hmm. it, that is the first problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the very first problem right there because <laughs> this is not Dilemma the number one. issue. You know, if, if he doesn't have people smoking in his room, even if he has a bong, even if he smokes in his room, if that's not the place that people go to burn, then that's not the place people go to burn. Right. Yeah, and it's up to you to set those limits and restrictions. 
One, I, I 100% agree. And actually, awesome. uh, Reddit did determine, like, after the voting, because you vote for it, nice. that they, the, the person that published this is not the asshole. It has been determined. Yeah, awesome. I would vote not, I would vote not, not the, the asshole. It's like a yeah. simple, Absolutely. in my opinion, communication issue of yeah. if he doesn't want people in the room, they could talk to each other about, hey, maybe don't send people to my room to smoke with me. Even though he mentions it's done indirectly, it's not like he's actually telling people, go smoke in M's room. He's just saying you like can't smoke mine. in my room. Yeah, yeah. so people go yeah. to the next place. Yeah, no way. He's nah. an yeah. asshole. No Everyone way. can set their own boundaries, yeah. man. You get, in college, yeah. it's adult time, baby. I Grow was, up. I was actually really, um, I was prepared for Reddit to be dicks there, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go to this person's defense. I'm about to <laughs> pop on Reddit right after yeah. this episode, and I, I was about to go. When I read through it the first time, I only glanced through it. I was just like, you kind of sound like an asshole if you're kind of sending everybody to this guy's room. But it's indirect, and yeah. he's yeah, not saying indirect. that they can't smoke his weed or his bong, <laughs> and he's not saying that he's like saying only he can have his weed. But I mean, it also even if it's a frat like house, he's like, oh, but you can go right there. Like, yeah, yeah. he's not like, like saying, mm, follow have... the yellow brick road to yeah, M's room. Exactly. <laughs> it sounds like M has his stash laying about, and on more than a few times, people have gone in there to smoke their own stash and have maybe left with their own stash, and less of his has been there. Probably, you know, this guy has an open door policy on his room apparently because he has a problem saying yeah. no to maybe people. Maybe it's too open. So, so Maybe it's too open, and um, no, nah, it sounds like the, the the original posters got the right idea. You yeah, know, if that's the type of people you're letting into your room to smoke. They shouldn't be yeah. going into your room. To yeah. Smoke. Yeah. There's this thing called boundaries, like with rooms. Even like yeah. you can either have your room, like your door open or shut. Yeah, and I don't think anyone's gonna be like mad about it. But if you're keeping your room like open all the time and your shit's and just I've, laying out, I've never lived in a frat house before, so I also I don't know what I've, that's like to have like I've people that actually live in on life. site. And then campus. having people that are part of the fraternity but don't live in the frat house. Yeah. And so, like, I can imagine people, like, coming in, you know, coming into the house from off campus, you know? Especially parties and, then, and, and shit. And then, or, yeah. or even not, like, just during the day to come and visit and then being like, oh, yeah. well, hey, we, you know, guys, we live here. We don't smoke just all throughout the house. If you're going to smoke, you can't smoke in my room. Yeah. And they're like, oh, where can we smoke? M has people smoking it in their room. You know, but that's not necessarily like sending people to the room, but that's just like you can't smoke in you're this house. Facts. You know, you're stating facts. You yeah. can't yeah. smoke all over this house. I live here. I deal with this fraternity. There's probably what forty plus brothers. I don't know how many people are it in fraternities. Really Usually a lot. On you know, which frat, and yeah. so it's like you got to have some chapter? type of moderation there. And so we might not even be getting the whole story. There might be a lot of you know fraternity things going on there where maybe that guy is the asshole because maybe he's a higher up brother and he's kind of like <laughs> I have more seniority and. And I say they can't smoke in my room. Kind and that of guy has less. You know, yeah. that guy has less seniority, so he can't tell this guy no. You yeah. Know? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I have all the story there, but regardless, it seems like frat life's an interesting one, and this is a conversation I, I, I'm actually kind of like pleased to know that they're having. I know. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I appreciate like wild, doing that communication with your with your brother, your brother, your brother. I mean, yeah. I myself like I dated uh, a frat bo or an ex, you know, a frat boy. He was he moved on from fraternity life. He wasn't in college anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't he know. My opinion fratty. of frat boys, huh? <laughs> he was a former frat. A former fratty, <laughs> fratty light. Fratty light. You would say. Uh, <laughs> and half the stories he told me, they would like bitch about anything. So this wouldn't be surprising that one of them would be. Like getting salty. About that? Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Oh, like, yeah. From what I've been told about like frat life and like, I mean, for any like former <laughs> former frat stoners <laughs> that listen to us, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I've never been in Greek life. They won't even email us. They like. won't even. Email. It'd be <laughs> nice not. to get an email, guys. Yeah, because we don't have any emails today. No, <laughs> and I see you listening. I no, no, but I'm saying that I'm actually curious if there is any stoners out there that were a part of a fraternity that are That's checking true. us out. Write us in and let us a little bit know. Let us know a little bit more about. But only if you're a stoner yeah. that was in right. <laughs> well, for this particular instance and this particular matter, yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I only want to hear from you about your experience in a frat, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and that that type of life. Yeah. But yeah. Apparently, in like Greek life, or so I've been told. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. they will like report each other for any little like inconvenience <laughs> someone's causing to to them, whether it be to the whole like. It sorority or fraternity petty. or even just yeah so they're just a bunch person. of snitches yeah they'll like oh, circle man, up, they'll call a meeting snitches. my uh my shitty former frat ex told me <laughs> that a whole organ organization meeting like anyone that was in that fraternity that he was a part of 
in college, they called a meeting because he hadn't gone to a couple of parties and it made them look bad. Oh, wow. Like, these people read into every little minor thing. That's so I'm lot. not surprised Bunch of that socialites. Mike, I mean, that M, yeah. I don't know if his name's Mike. I'm just M. M. So I'm not surprised <laughs> that M would be, you know, getting mad about indirectly people coming to his room. <laughs> I'm going to just guess that this, kid, this kid's name is Matthew. 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 M is Matthew. Matthew. You know what? That sounds like that a That sounds about right. Name. <laughs> Matthew. I love those memes everyone has of like, I'm so sorry for what Matthew did to you. And like, it's not <laughs> directly applied to anybody, but it's just like every Matthew person. Did Matthew. Matthew did it. <laughs> it's definitely Matthew. But yeah, so yeah, the overall consensus is that like we all agree on, he is not the asshole. Not the asshole. Yeah. I don't like what a, what there was an interesting got? thing in the comments. Someone in the oh. comments said, you know what could probably solve this? A community bong that's like outside in the back. Yeah. So that anybody that We're wants several. I mean you're all sharing bongs anyway. Yeah. You're living in I'm, such I'm a place. I'm wondering if there is so a reason why they have swapping. to do it in a room, you know? Like they they stated there is a room, so maybe like outdoors is not kosher there. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah depending maybe on if what they're college on campus. Is. That's true. Because then at that regards then if it was like that, then everybody get your own stop being bitches. Mm-hmm. Right for real though. Yeah, everyone have your own piece. Honestly, like, I went to college. I had my own pieces. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't trust other fuckers. You can afford to get into a fraternity and all that costs and, and stuff. You, yeah, know, you, you can, can go afford get a, a bong. bong for 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. You can even you have a nice a couple party. of vaporizers where you're not even worried about smoke that much. Yeah, yeah and like, I take care of my pieces. I'm a little yeah. hesitant with like randos using pieces. my pieces, though. So like I could even understand this guy not wanting to you know have people use his bong and sending them well, away. Well, I'm also, pre- I mean, this is probably pre-COVID, right? So many germs. Uh, yes, it was pre-COVID. Yeah, so sure. many germs. People crossing. feel a little bit different about that, too, now. Nowadays. Yeah. This looks like actually this is during COVID times. This was posted Ooh. 258 Why are you guys sharing ago. bongs during Even COVID? Worse. So within get a year span, piece. this has happened. Yeah, just get your own piece. Get your own piece. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm. What else you got for us other than these COVID spread <laughs> fratties? I do have another one. And uh, this one I did uh, just read the title to Double A, and he was excited by just the title alone. <laughs> it's interesting. It's arousing. To say the least. Yeah. Um, this one's from about like three years ago. Okay. But I, I was scrolling on like I like this title. It pulls me in. It's a real <laughs> attention getter, like they teach you in English. Got a good hook. It says, Am I the asshole for abandoning a stoner in the woods yes. without a compass? <laughs> Without a specifically what I want to know is how compass. somehow this person asking this question is going to try to make this seem like he somehow could not be the asshole. Like the fact that you already had I to go to the internet. I didn't the compass part yet, and I'm already like, yeah. You said, you, "Am I the asshole you for left abandoning?" Someone in the woods. If you have to use that phrase, <laughs> the term how, abandoning, term stoner or sober. Done. How far into the woods are we talking here? What other supplies I've do we it, have? I saw something called "into the woods." Into the and woods. And usually, <laughs> when you use that phrase, you're in there. Into the, yeah. I'm just saying, if I can get lost in downtown What's San Francisco during woods? Pride, I'm pretty sure anybody can get lost in the woods. Oh, it doesn't take very a whole easily. Lot There's of not identifiable buildings in the, um, in the woods. I'm curious. Just from my knowledge in Boy Scouts, I'll tell you, like eight out of ten times that someone gets lost in the woods is because they underestimate how easy it is to get lost yep. in the woods. It's not because like they went hella far or no. like they made some. You like, can crazy be like a fun. mile in. It's and just like literally, you lose your sense of direction. Yeah. because you're not used to not having landmarks and shit and then you kind of like daze off on where you're like what you're doing you're just walking and look and so pretty for the people who just don't even know what east from west is yeah they're all of a sudden lost <laughs> they now are like wait what direction do i go to get back like it's just it's it's crazy there's you're people, done. yeah like you said they can only be a mile in and then people have been lost for and days that yeah far there's the forest. People and have now, gotten lost in forests that really aren't that big of a forest where you're no. like, dude, you could walk through that in like two hours, but you accidentally get caught in some kind of loop de whatever and suddenly just, you're yeah. in there all day. Like, like one way to prove that I would easily get lost in the woods is just driving up through the redwoods and seeing trees and driving on the way back and be like, see, we're already almost home. We passed that. <laughs> and they're like, no, you like, dumb bitch. We, no. that, that tree that you saw yesterday was like 20 miles from here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, so shit. It would be very easy to get lost in the woods. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll get to reading this yeah, now. Please, please. I just read the title, I, I, I and it's already spewing discussion. Like, no, need more. Like, yeah, like, All right. Possibly gonna be so am I the asshole for abandoning a stoner in the woods without a compass? Yes. Um, <laughs> my college is a school of resource management and environmental science. Right on. Uh, there's one dude in my section everyone hates because he's a moron and thinks he's oh, better no. than everyone else. For instance, he talks about how he already knows everything because he already took the course, even though he's still in it because he failed. 
<laughs> in common first semester, everyone has to pass a compassing exercise to find their way to a specific point in the woods. Oh, God. This guy, Sean, found another moron to be his partner. His name, Sean, but this time spelled S-H-A-W-N. Okay. The original moron is spelled Sean, S-E-A-N. Gotcha. Sean and Sean. Sean and Sean. Dumb and dumber, apparently. Scene. Yeah. <laughs> the bus right yeah. there, every time he opens his bag, we can smell weed, and he tries to deny having it, and we're all like, dude, we don't care. As soon as he gets <laughs> off the bus, he pulls out a shatter pen, and they start hitting it, pretending they're trying to hide it, but showing everyone because they think they're cool. Oh, fun. An hour later, me and my partner are in the woods, and I haven't seen another group in over 30 minutes. Sean comes up asking if we've seen Sean... You know, with the W. Because, you know, with the W. <laughs> because he can't find him, and he doesn't have a compass. Oh, God. And my partner goes, something tells me you were 30 meters from him at one point. We use tools <laughs> called chains to navigate, which space us 30 meters apart from our partners. To which Sean replies, okay, I'm going to go keep looking for him. Can you help me? And my partner, not wanting to ruin our embark, said, no. But also in my head, I have these images of him getting lost too, trying to find him and everyone having to go find them both. So I told him to continue to his point and let the professor there know. Half an hour later, we get to our point and the professors are just learning of this to head out and find him. Oh, Turns out he fell over in the snow, which was past my knees, and I'm 5'11", and was so high, decided that meant he had to lie there. <laughs> when they found him, he was burying himself. Jeez. I keep thinking I should have helped find the dude. He could have been super hurt or lost for a long time in the deep snow. But instead, I told the only person looking for him to abandon him. Am I the asshole? I feel like that's survival of the fittest right there. <laughs> Am I, I the mean, asshole now? I mean... <laughs> That one is kind of a strange one here. It's a bit in the gray area. So it's a little gray area because it's not a get he it's all retrospective the way he feels like an asshole is because like, well, I told him to just leave a per, per, per what he thought was a perfectly capable adult human being in college to survive in a normal college course in a, what is sounds like a familiar area that they use. Yeah. Um and like initially his thought would to be like, whatever, if he gets lost, he's just gonna be some dumbass standing somewhere, like getting <laughs> high and we'll go find him. Yeah. Like I definitely don't know if he's the asshole because this guy was like face down in some snow and almost got hurt. That's I mean, hundred percent his himself. responsibility to not get so fucking plastered on a shatter pen before a college class to then that you walk could off. fucking walk. I mean to be fair, because he was burying himself, he was sort of safer in a way. <laughs> but I'm also same. imagining the image of him not really doing it properly, and it's just like legs at like a 45 degree <laughs> angle out of the snow, and not really yeah. someone digging properly. Yeah. So this gentleman who posts this has planted seeds throughout his story of him being an asshole, mm -hmm. regardless of this particular instance, how much of an asshole he was. I think the way that he's described this person from the get-go has just been a lot of negative tones towards them um, right off the bat. And then also going about being like, oh, he has weed. Oh, he, we don't care you have weed. Oh, but then you're also over-focused on the fact that he has it and him showing off the pen mm -hmm. and everything. You're kind of hung up more on the weed than it seems like this guy is. And then you also bring it up that the guy is so high off his ass that he can't, you know, he just is laying down in the snow. Like, it's also a little presumptuous that the guy's burying himself because he's high on a shatter pen. Like, you know, like Double A even mentioned, like, a little bit smarter to kind of give yourself some type of a cave rather than just be in an open cold. Mm -hmm. Even if it is a snow cave, it's not the best, you know, thing, but it is some sort of insulation. But to just kind of be very negative throughout this entire aspect makes you more of an asshole than the fact that you told the guy who's in a college class to look out for himself. And, you know, he kind of didn't even really follow the instructions to go to the point. So it doesn't really seem like this necessarily makes you the asshole, but you do seem to have some asshole tendencies you might want to work on. Hmm. <clears throat> At least that's what I feel. Yeah. I totally agree in the sense that this guy is a fucking hater. From the start <laughs> of, like, from the very first sentence, he's hating on 
My boy Sean with an E. Sean with an E. <laughs> Sean with an E. I would say the only reason he might be doing that is because he's is trying. I mean, he's on a post about questioning of when I'm am I the asshole. I think he's just trying to give his like, whether it's negative or not perspective, perspective on picture. why he may not be the asshole because I've, like maybe this other asshole deserved it type thing. And again, like we can't, we don't see it. Like we don't no. actually see or know this Sean. Like. Both no. could be completely correct. Like, both could just <laughs> could be, be two assholes, like, in a college class. But, like, on a Reddit post, it's kind of hard to tell. But I definitely imagine that, like, yeah, this guy just hates on Sean <laughs> for whatever Sean does, even if he's, like, a slacker college kid or whatever. Like, you know, definitely still an asshole move in general, human being-wise, to just be like, nah, fuck you, man. I'm going to, like, go on on my own, and I'm going to tell your partner to go on, too. Like... <laughs> Again, because it's like, well, you're already just hating on him, and you obviously had some type of intent of not caring. Yeah. My only thing that uh, I think he's an asshole for is not saying anything to anyone else about the situation. Yeah, and basically not, and having to find out that the teachers, like, found out Took about out it all, like, one, from yeah. the partner, most Yeah, likely. and especially about the, the whole, you know, uh, other Sean falling. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he been, didn't like, want to ruin his embark, but he could have easily mentioned it to the other people on his team and let them be a part of that decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, exactly. I mean, in all fairness, like, they're out in the wilderness. He's mentioned that there's snow, and it's high up. For all intents and purposes, Sean could have died. How yeah. how far of a fall did it say? Uh, I know it said the snow was like up to his knees. But I don't it said think he's five eleven how... and it was up to his knees. Yeah, it was up to his knees. <laughs> yeah. like no, but I don't think high. it mentions how big the fall was. Okay, because I'm trying to like, did he fall off of a ledge down into like another area, or was it just like, he was stone and tripped and fell in the snow and was just laying there being dumb? Because here, so my jaded perspective, I have had those stoner kids in my class, and they are fucking annoying like i i'm a stoner and i was in those classes but i i sat there i took my notes i did my work the ones that are sitting there going oh don't see my pen and doing all that shit they never have their stuff they wait until everyone's already doing their shit to go hey can i get some paper can i get a pen can i get it and you're like dude we're already in the fucking quiz shut up you're gonna get me in trouble like I've had those kids in my class where by the time you get to those big projects where it's like a midterm, a final, yeah, when you hear someone, one of them's not doing well, you really don't care because they fucked around all well, semester. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's still a form of self-responsibility, like I said, on our personal yeah. Yeah. drugs before they go to a college class. Yeah, like, like, if he was really just sitting there don't dumb be half his shit. ass in a fucking <laughs> snow be, and, like, not know, and like falling because he was that high, like, like that was just a dumb that's decision on, you, on your bro. part. It doesn't make him no, an asshole, the but guy, it sure makes Yeah, the guy could have reached out to the professor and been like, yo... That guy needs to find his partner. We don't know where he is, and like exactly. that would have like, been easy. There's responsibility on both sides, no matter what. The you don't real necessarily story need is. to give up your yeah. assignment and go help them. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, yeah. But definitely got to tell the the instructor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because even if it wasn't like snowing, yeah. In retrospect, let's reverse it and put it in the middle of su like hot summer in July. Yeah. Heat, Heat stroke. Heat, you yeah. can die from being overheated in the woods for yeah. a long time without water too. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have water considering he didn't bring a compass. Like, I wouldn't just label this guy like an asshole for like life, they, but if there's like, yeah, you're a bit of an asshole boat, I would vote that <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't say asshole that he is an asshole, yeah. asshole tendencies. but definitely a prick. Yeah, a little there we bit go. of a prick move. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a prick move. Because honestly, again, in that situation, what's the worst to come of it, come from the situation if he was like empathetic and like went back yeah. and helped him and was like, "Get come on, dude, like get the fuck up, like let's go." <laughs> like what he hurts his project. Well, guess what? You can also then just tell, tell the, the teacher, professor. like, "Well, he was about to freaking probably die in the snow or whatever." Like however dramatic Maybe you should it give was. Give me some extra credit, bitch. Yeah, like, yeah. I was helping a student yeah. out and like, Snacks, yeah, be, I like, like. And if if they're a decent professor, they will work with you. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. and honestly, the best move, even if he didn't want to help search for Sean. Sean, he could have just went with other Sean to go tell the professors earlier about yeah. Sean missing. Well, and yeah. Sean that didn't go tell the professor is also more the oh, asshole. Oh, one hundred percent. There's getting, a lot of things that could have been done on both sides. To go do it and then not following through on that, like fuck you, this sort bro. This just makes me still not want to go to college. Oh is what no, this really no. Does. Only go to college like, oh, if there God. is a goal on the other side that you really want. Other than that, fuck it. Guess what? <laughs> I'm the other Sean that's just like trying to get through the class, and I just happen to get paired up with that guy and then I wanted to listen to the guy who wasn't halfway in the snow <laughs> and like I'm just trying to get through like my day like <laughs> like so many damn it you that. gotta rely on some people on that <laughs> 
But clearly, if he's having to ask the internet, it's, a bit of an it's asshole. weighing on his conscience. It's weighing and on he him. knew he did a little and again, fucked up thing. With the hate he was bringing, he, it's like you can tell he's like the whole it's time he's like trying to sort of defend himself, like <laughs> trying to paint the picture of the other guy, like. Yeah, rather than just stating that, are you the like, asshole? Yeah, like the like, <laughs> yeah. What's the like? You could just say he smokes a lot. You don't have to say like the whole description. That he's a moron. Of him being <laughs> he a moron failed. And, like, trying to hide smoking, but like, again, like, you're he, definitely he was painting way more a pretty hung hateful. Up on that than he was. It, it is a specific. Well, yeah, he type he of took a big ass now. paragraph just it to is, talk yeah. to lay the ground for for, it's a, it's ground for how user. stupid this it's guy. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna go into detail. Yeah. If they feel like it, and even if it's jaded or not, they're gonna they're gonna they're go gonna there. use it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that all you have for us next? You got yeah, another I just one thought no? to pull two today, just two? you know. Yeah. Those are fun. I like this. I want to come back to this. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, I want to see if I can keep finding just weed related ones in some way or another. Oh yeah, because I mean, there's some juicy ones I see on Reddit. All the time. <laughs> I, 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 I feel, I feel, I feel a snack, it. a snacks segment here. I don't know, maybe call it fill your snack hole. <laughs> fill your snack uh, hole. That's wow. Yeah, that's uh, right to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fill your snacks. snack hole. <laughs> snack stories. <laughs> well, that was wonderful, snacks. Yeah, thank you for bringing that. To us. Anytime. That wonderful. Ooh. Yeah, and to move right along, it's it's time for another special segment. Wacky news! Yeah, that's right. Wacky news. Hello, welcome to Wacky News with Double A. I am here with you. I only have a couple of articles today, and kind of um, an honorable mention. I kind of want to go over the one that you sent me, Chuck, just a little bit because I thought that one was, even though it's kind of a little sad, it's real sweet. So I kind of want to go over that one at the end. Um, to start off today is are you going... are you talking about the three amigos? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get excited for the three amigos. That's cool. Cool little story. Um, let's see. The first one I want to go over because let's see what was the other one. Just want to make sure. No, yeah, I want to go over this one first. Um, so title of this one, and this is pulled from MJ Biz Daily. Um, they've been around since like 2011. I posted the story on Twitter. You can go and find that. You'll hear the socials at the end. Um, Las Vegas cannabis industry is prepping for the launch of consumption lounges. Ooh. So yes. Las Vegas is apparently, oh. I kind of read through this a little bit, but they were like, did some surveys and stuff like that and kind of found out like how many people might go to these types of businesses and things. Um, like over 60 different retailers in the Vegas area have like noted interest in possibly like opening up uh, like a smoking consumption lounge, like Hell very yeah. similar to Lowell Cafe. I'm sure they'll probably, a lot of them will adapt to having food and Ooh. snacks and stuff like that. Um, so be that's there? really cool. Like a hookah lounge <laughs> with weed. Yeah. And then Snacks like signing up already. They even Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean it already it does sound exciting. <laughs> like if you imagine going to the strip and you're like, oh, I'm not going to the cigar lounge, like I'm going to the fucking smoke going to lounge. The stoner it's like, lounge. Yeah, we're about to go hit some some uh, bongs, <laughs> some bongs. I'm Remember dumb. Yeah. I was just talking about when you listed snacks. <laughs> I was just making a lame joke. <laughs> we love you for that. Snacks. I'm really good at those. We Heck love you for yes. That. Um, so three of like the main things they were kind of listing here that like would be marketable was like focusing on a comfortable, calm space to provide an alternative to like a nightclub atmosphere. So they were they are trying to like not necessarily just make like a Vegas vibe smoke lounge, but actually okay. like a smoke lounge that maybe brings a different kind of smoker to Vegas type thing. Put in uh, hammocks. Converting an existing Ooh. restaurant to include the option of infuse your own food. Oh. So like make your own oh, food yes. at the table type thing. Right um, on. Um, on gong. Add that button. Like, yeah, I mean, we can all, oui, oui. like, I mean, for five minutes here, I think we could all list off some things here. Like, I'd love to just get that brought to me with like a stick of uh -huh. can of butter that I could just slather the amount. I would of, like, like <laughs> I would like my mashed potatoes <laughs> with can of butter, please. Yeah, just a little D A double right bacon cheeseburger. I mean, seriously. With like, the can of infused mayo and the can of infused cheese and the can of infused <laughs> bacon and the can of infused butter on the bun and the can of infused can of infused. <laughs> Chuck it sitting over there, only two bites out of the burger, just eyes closed in the lounge. Just <laughs> I would just like a Cannabis cake pop. That's I'm not asking Ooh, for much. Cannabis cake pop. I, like I would it. like to think I'm I not like asking it, for much. 
Um, using a consumption lounge to drive traffic into nearby businesses. So they're thinking of also trying to place it in areas of the strip that like need some like revenue. And yes. some, like, Put it right next traffic. to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be great. I feel yeah. like he'd be pissed about that. Like just the abomination. Um, I guess Planet 13 is like <laughs> Actually, the I don't second know his views biggest. On weed. Um, what's that? <laughs> I, said, I said I felt like that was going to be like an abomination to Gordon Ramsay to have his, oh, but I don't know his views on weed. I'm pretty sure he's heavily yeah. If any listeners and can confirm him if he is pro weed he's a send us an email hater. why he's would he a... like weed <laughs> like he's a where hater. does he live is it even legal where he lives i do think he lives in the states now. Is he i believe he does i think he has I a uk he does. house i, I honestly not legal have not really from. cared yeah. that much about gordon ramsay to really learn that much about him other than he's nice to kids <laughs> and just, yells at adults i'm and i will say food, i'm man. totally assuming because he's just usually a hater so why would he not hate on cannabis he makes a lot of good food I don't know if I've He doesn't make good scrambled food. eggs. <laughs> I have not seen him try to make scrambled eggs. Do you like soupy scrambled eggs? He, yeah, I do not. It's not okay. he shit. Does, they're more he makes them wet. It's shit. They it's never not, get not wet. They just are. It's literally the like, most shittiest like, scrambled eggs I've ever not seen in my life. Fine. I actually tried to make they're them They're milky. One time. They're literally milky because he puts milk in it. <laughs> I mean, I my pa- I do milk and my, or I used to do milk no, 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 and no, my no, eggs. But it's like, like. But he yeah he leaves them runnier than. Oh no. I've, yeah. I've never had him that like a bowl way. Of oatmeal egg. <laughs> this is why we won the war. <laughs> yeah, so um, Planet 13 is a p- <laughs> Planet 13 because that's a not why we won the war. Shut <laughs> your mouth. Didn't you watch Hamilton? We had a man on oh the inside. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, we are I love derailing right now. Hundred percent. I love it. Sorry. That's sorry. what this episode's for. No, it that's is. what this episode's for. I take for. it back. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Yes. I'll do it again. <laughs> um. So Planet Thirteen is like uh, the second biggest um like cannabis club like in the Vegas area apparently, and they are definitely one of the ones super interested in doing this and opening up like a huge one. Um, they were quoted as to say like we serve regular food and you infuse your own food. If you have a steak, we'd give you a pad of garlic butter with THC. Oh, a salad you can get infused butter. dressing. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean it's super easy. A <laughs> uh, question: You said Planet Thirteen, correct? Mm-hmm. The Cannabis Club Planet Thirteen, right? Yes. Yeah. So I actually have had more than a few friends that have been there, like and, okay. and, have, and have actually shopped in there. Um, they okay. say that that is one of the the ones that you want to go to if you go to the Strip. Like right particularly, on. you visit that, that smoke shop. Yeah, nice, nice. Cool. Yeah. So if they're so if it's they're in the ones, good like, hands. If they're the ones that are front running this, um, they seem ex- to be the main. Expect that one article. to really be the one to look at. Because I also just read another thing here as well that's I think really cool is like <clears throat> along with this, the consumption lounges, they would want to m- almost get a building large enough to also add a cannabis museum. And, and then a separate regular smoking lounge for just inclusivity. So, okay. um, a club, everything under one roof. Like So you're like going there for your one stop. It's a weed mecca. Yeah, they're like, job. they're Vegas is Lowell Farms, double A. Yeah, they're trying that's, to that's really what Vegas, that is. They Lowell really Farms that, thing. Like, like yeah. Lowell Farms is very LA. It's very like, sit outside at a table, like smoke your joints in an ashtray, you know, drink a little fancy drink and have some appetizers. These guys, I think, are trying to make, like, a fucking chill-out spot. Take it to the Vegas level. Plus, mm-hmm. like, with a club. Yeah, like, everything, like they said, that everything under one roof. Like, I would love to go under that roof and be like, oh, I'm going to go Hell to the yeah. Museum, yeah. and then afterwards, let's go back for dessert. Yep. Because I bet you they're going to be, like, can infused ice cream. Ooh. And, the, and I mean, the in CDs, hammocks. What's that? I said, put in hammocks. <laughs> That's... I mean, not something that's a bad idea. It, they it should would be do that. logical. <laughs> exactly. Get him on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get get them on the phone or in our email box. Right get me now. Armani. <laughs> steak. Steak. <laughs> Bring me steak. Um, it looks like Thrive's CEO, which is another company interested in, says, "I don't think the same user goes to a nightclub as they do a consumption lounge. So we'll definitely go with more of a curated food and beverage program, and just have just a really cool, clean kind of environment for people to hang out and consume their cannabis." That's really exciting. And then, Definitely. yeah, it's just literally quote a lot of quotes from companies that are like that really have like a lot of good ideas on how it should feel. Ew. Um, yeah, if you look at a casino floor today, it smells like something nice. Why is that? There are plenty of people smoking cigarettes in there. I disagree. I think that smells it, awful. It still smells like cigarettes in the casinos. Yeah. Um, and really, it, they, it, and what they go into as well that I don't really have to go over in detail in this episode or anything, but it's going to be the hoops to jump through for like 
even though it's legal, it's like city ordinances of smoking yeah. indoors, what they can do after they leave that building. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's all kinds of legalities that it's go still, into that. Yeah. So they are talking about just like a lot of red tape. Look I'm, forward to it, but it's not going to be like a six month turnaround project. Man, probably, cause they're going to have to. Nah, just, but you know, w- one thing I will suggest is uh, Planet Planet Thirteen. If you're listening here, uh, you should have Seth Rogen help with your decorating because that pothead seems to know what he's doing. Uh, lots of ceramics. I love his ceramic work. Yeah, he's got I wish his stuff just wasn't so damn expensive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but as far as Vegas goes, Vegas can afford his work. Vegas yeah, they can, can totally afford his you work. You know, so I'm just yeah. like, yeah. They can afford a part They go hard. Seth Rogen. Exactly. Yeah. And I just think that would be a brilliant idea because I like his stuff. I think it's gorgeous. And then if they go through with that club idea, throughout DJ sets, just throw in a couple Seth Rogen laughs on track. <laughs> 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 That's Hell awesome. yes. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. I think that's really cool. I hope that we get to like go over that kind of thing in the future or possibly, you know, do a little live stream or something from go you know. Check Vegas. it out. Yeah, and go check something like that out. Uh the next story that I have for you is a, a pretty good news one as well, actually. Um, currently, the the title is lim- is labeled really long. It's top federal health agency wants to input or wants input on marijuana research barriers, including Schedule One and limited strain access. So essentially, what that means is um, NIH, which is um, let me just National Institutes of Health, which is essentially like like they said, it's like the top federal health agency. Like it's not it's not the same as the CDC because that's more like the world health. This is like more our federal health organization, essentially. They now uh, have investigators on their team that are pretty much just like at the point now where they are finally at least saying on the surface here that, you know, cannabis has been around for what we know to be like thousands of years. People have used it medicinally for that long. Like we do need more scientific research and we want to know why there's barriers there in the first place on that and other schedule one drugs and things like that and strain restrictions. Um, So it's like FDA has approved cannabinoid based therapies for select conditions. um, And then the NIH acknowledged that the majority of states have adopted medical cannabis programs. Um, But they just said often inadequate scientific research to support the benefit of their intended use in those states, which is accurate because unfortunately due to the restrictions, you know, these these like tests that they do or these like votes that they do or even like the small sample sizes of people, <laughs> it's so small that it's not scientifically large enough to really say like, oh, this is without <laughs> a doubt going to be, you know, based on statistics, going to be how this is going to work. Yeah. You know, like I think like some of the largest studies I've ever seen are like <laughs> 2000 people. That's nothing when you're talking about legalizing a, a drug in a state of 33 million people like California. Yeah. You know, you need more than that than just like 2000 people. That's not it's barely a town. Um, and so they are basically just like saying we need more. And so that's a good thing. That's good news. If they're yeah. asking for that, that means the questions being asked up at the right place. It's not just give like us the info. Yeah. We give, want the yeah, info. Do the studies. Yeah, Help but, mankind. Let's just <laughs> learn about shit. For all, for all mankind. mankind. <laughs> yeah, like they're basically yes. saying that it's getting to the point because so many states are legalizing like that. It, there's a need for it. Like now there's a need. Yeah. For, like the use is so blatantly obvious more than ever before that it's like they need to start making sure we have scientific studies and 100%. facts now about this shit. Help people know what they should be smoking if they've got seizures or arthritis or whatever. Give them the right exactly. shit. Exactly. Help them with their cancer. Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, while well, the DEA recently approved additional manufacturers um, and the National Institute on Drug Abuse um, to seeking a new contractor to supply cannibal, cannabis studies, not cannibal. Um, <laughs> oh, cannibal studies now, right on. Right on. Now. Studies. I'm about um, many have <laughs> argued, though, that scientists should also be allowed to get marijuana from state legal retailers so that their studies more accurately, accurately reflect the products being used in commercial markets. Uh, That's okay. another issue with a lot of studies is they're using, like... Street weed? No, they're using... Yes, yeah, sometimes they could be weed they confiscate from off the street or it's okay. weed that like they grow as like an experiment to be like yeah uh, what's this like and they don't know anything yeah they don't know the so grow it's process, not right the it's not really the norm it's not what's generally sold gotcha. you know and like yeah, there's gotcha. the, uh, they're pointing out those facts so these are things that are really good for these people to be saying it's awesome improve your research <laughs> or your methods for research yes uh, check out the cannabis cutie on Instagram. She does uh, a couple different podcasts and goes on them a lot. Shares a lot of great knowledge on like 
different studies. With a name like Cannabis articles. Cutie, how could I not want to check that out? Yeah, she, <laughs> and she is super cute. Cannabis and she's a cutie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I have to find the story real quick, but I don't think it'll take me that long to find it. Hey, mister. But this is just a... Hey, a I mean, sometimes you got to find some stories. <laughs> Were they actually called the Three Amigos? No, no, no. Because oh. I was like, that's too perfect. That's okay. I can find it by this. You've got this. While you're looking for it, I can tell you about my own science experiment at home. Oh, I lost. You had a science experiment at home. Yeah, with yes. uh, my car- with my weed cartridges, uh, okay. because I just got done moving. I moved in with my partner, and uh, I put all of my weed uh, essentially into one little tiny little circular box. Mm-hmm. And I, when I get onto my cleaning streak or whatever, I throw away like little boxes. I'm just like, I don't need the box anymore. I threw it away threw away three boxes uh, that I definitely needed. No. The weed wasn't in there. I had all the cartridges. Okay. But you threw away three boxes you needed? You don't, so you don't know which cartridge I don't. Like... I don't know which cartridge what? was what strain. I didn't know oh, what was no. a sativa, <laughs> what was an indica. So um, I did a week's worth of one, <laughs> one cartridge. <laughs> I right love before, this. Right before, not necessarily right before I'm going to sleep, but like the last hour or so like of me winding down afternoon. as I'm about to get ready for yeah. bed to see if it helped make me sleepy or not. (laughs) Um, And after, I think, maybe the third or fourth day, I'm like, okay, I don't think this is necessarily a sativa. It's definitely not an indica, so maybe this is like a sativa-heavy hybrid. So I put, uh, I got a Sharpie, and I drew an H question mark on the cartridge. Right on. This week, I'm working on another (laughs) cartridge, and I think, I'm pretty sure this one's an indica. I have a few more days, I mean... I have a few more days, obviously. <laughs> and the next week, I adventure on to the third cartridge. Venture, because right that is an adventure right there. That That is quite the experiment. I like it. Tweet how it goes. I, I should. And then, Heck yeah. And then the last the last week, you should just get a piece of duct tape and three batteries. And just tape them all together. And oh, jeez. And remove all of them at one time just and be like, I them. don't care what you are. <laughs> <laughs> you like are those cute little like, multicolored gel pens back in elementary school that I wanted to get at the Scholastic Book Fair, but it didn't happen. Which, oh. which I actually got one of those wonderful pens recently from, Shut the, front from the, the wonderful people at The Re-Up. Oh, when, yeah, I ordered, the when I ordered from them, they gave me a, a, an option for a, like an extra 25 bucks I got a little bobble pen that has like 12 different colors in it by sliding them down. I love those. Those book fairs were fucking scams for parents. They were way scams. Too much money on shit that we definitely wanted. Oh, 100%. But here's the thing. Yeah. I would get excited. I, I would do what everyone would do. I'm just going to take a quick hit off, hit off of this. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we're here for. So I would circle it like any other kid, like, oh, I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I want this. And then running it up to my poor mother and father. Yeah. Yep. They were like, Here's ten bucks. Make it work. And I'm like, but, 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 yeah, that's but not gonna buy me anything. Of letting me circle the things I want, and I come back with like thirty-seven <laughs> back page on all these codes. Like we can get at least half of this, right? <laughs> like three thousand dollars by the end of that shit. Or the thing that hurt the most is out of all the books that I would want, she's just like, actually, I'm gonna go with you and I'll help you pick out your books. And I'm like, oh my god, yes, my mom's gonna help me pick out all the books I want. <laughs> and she goes, oh, that Judy. Bloom book looks good, and I never wanted to read Judy Bloom. Oh. That wasn't one of the ones I circled, Mother. Dang. And she's mother. just like, she buys me two Judy Bloom books, and I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> am I supposed to do with this? Oh my goodness. So I somewhat got free reign. I, I was given, I think, 20 bucks for uh, Book Fair. That's like a okay but amount for, like, you can I, get a thing. I was given that. the rule I couldn't get, like, toys and stickers and stuff. I had to well, get books. How dare they? What? I had to get book, which I was fine with. I love like what when you came home, did they search your yeah. backpack they like they had, a, like I had, they had a warrant? Them, well, I had to show them what what like what, what I got. The $20 and on. then yeah, if if there was supposed to and be change, know, I had to give the, them the change. Yeah, they read the, the, the cost is thing. on Damn. the price is on the back, so like they knew I couldn't. Yeah, so yeah, I had right. to get books, uh, but I did. Saying, get, there was like, cool toys at the. Yeah, there was some cool stuff. They searched your shit like they had a warrant. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, warrant. Her mother's vagina is the. I was like nine to be fair and had no clue what I was doing. So <laughs> they gave direction. <laughs> My mom reminds me all the time. Like, she just shows me her scar, and that's just, like, her warrant to do whatever she feels like to me and say whatever she wants she's, to me. Yeah, she's got the scar to, to yeah, show you. Yeah, you know. 
Man, book that brought me back. Just book fairs, like oh, I'm yeah. just a poor boy. Nothing is oh. available. Dude, and they would set it up so <laughs> fucking cute. They would. I still they remember. literally would. The displays and everything. Oh, You're like, the, I'm in heaven. Yeah. Like that, I just imagine the queen like letters really big across, but instead it just says broke. <laughs> memories and what was funny was even the kids i knew who were kind of like with well-off parents like couldn't really get a lot of the stuff either because they didn't want to spend that much money on that kind of stuff either so yeah. a lot of us were just in there like yeah this would all be really cool so, if so we could cool. get this stuff like, no, like so i would say yes scam. for the most part but then there's always that one fucking kid that gets there's an allowance on top yeah. of having wealthy parents and they show up with like 50 and they bucks. just come to school and they're balling and it's just like your parents give me that and they're like no technically no. this is my allowance it's my money like, uh-huh. <laughs> it's just like, great, Jessica. What are you contributing to the household at 10? <laughs> you ain't mowing the lawn. Dishes? Uh- <laughs> so I have one more story. Chuck right brought this up to me. Um, it's kind of an older story, but still a super sweet one. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about Baloo the bear, Leo the lion, and Shere Khan the tiger, who are all, who are all real ad- adult animals that were all founded in the wild. Um, and ended up living together for like many a years Aww. in harmony, like a lion, a tiger, perfect, and a bear. The perfect. Oh my! Name. Oh my! Um, yeah, perfect and perfect, names. perfect names. Um, and they were all males, which is okay. even crazier. A bro right. like, house again. The fact that they said real. that they were like never violent Rat with house. each other. Um, <laughs> so this was all back in 2016, but at that point it had been a 15 year friendship. So they Aww. really like okay. grew their like. For most of those animals, that's like their that's, that's an old their, lion. That's a good chunk of their lifespan. Um, that's a that's a pretty old bear. I think bears can live to like thirty, maybe. Like if that's like an old old bear, I think usually like twenties old. They, they got to like golden girl status. They, they did, did. kind of get to golden girl status, yeah. Um, they all have passed away since then. Okay. Um, that's just like why it's kind of a little bittersweet because like <laughs> um, they released like I, when we looked, they released all these stories like after they had all passed. Insert yeah. want want song. Yeah, in, insert want want song. I can do it. I can do it. It's okay. You got it's... This. There we go. They died. Aww. It is sad. Nah, that was. It was very sweet though. Like when, when I, I heard I sh- about, I'll share the story, story too. The oh. the pictures and it, the, the the people that had these three animals mm-hmm. had them captured in the most horrible way. Like. Baloo had a collar on that was like his neck was practically eating around the collar Aww. and it had to be like snapped off around him. Uh, Shere Khan was completely malnourished, like Aww. to the point where he was skeletal all over. And when they freed them, they were like from their their vices and like yeah. all their restraints. Got they cried when they were separated from each other while they were getting cleaned up. But the moment they were all introduced back to each other. They just wanted to cuddle, and they cuddled oh. and recouped together over like a course of like three or six months, Aww. like and, like healed together, and then they stayed together for fifteen years. That's awesome. That's just, I was yeah. just like, oh my fucking god, like baby. this is crazy to me. Like, and you know, you hear lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. my, this is oh my. Yeah, they were on two hundred and fifty acres, oh but they would. N- almost never be found more than a hundred and feet, hundred feet away from. Aww. Each other. I didn't know that part. You're a little codependent. This is making me as sad as like reading Coco's Kid in back in school. Aww. You know when they just like trauma bonded all of us over the yeah. gorilla and kitten. So it's a place called Noah's Ark Animal Sanctuary. I'm sure they're still around and they take care of all kinds of other animals. Those three were yeah. just like obviously a very special story that is uh, like yeah. probably going to be a once in a lifetime type thing. Like you're just not going to find that situation happen very often. Mm. Not only. The fact that those three male animals came together, but the fact they were k- kept together that long without like any problem. going oh. somewhere, no issue, like you know, like a lo- those animals that like, I can go do anything they want. You yeah, know? Like, they're, they're, they were full grown once they got healthy. They were full grown. And any lion, tiger, and bear destroyed each yeah, other. They got a bunch of started. big babies. Yeah, but they just were a bunch of big snuggly babies. Big so. friends. Yeah, big that's baby. what I wanted to end with with uh, some wacky news. Aww. So. I'll share that one as well, um, just because that one's super sweet. Um, this one, actually, I'm going to share this one because it has a Make you laugh, video. make you cry. Yeah, it's he, a, it's he, a bittersweet feel-good. 
<laughs> well, like, when I first read it, I was like, I wonder if it was like a circus gone wrong. Like the people that had them, like, you know, they didn't really mm, go. I wouldn't be surprised. Into, into that, like, you know. I mean, they could have, yeah, them, like, you know, poachers, anybody. I mean, it's a grizzly bear, a male lion, and a male Bengal tiger. Like, yeah. those are all like prime, like, things that fucking poachers try to get at. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like they could have found them in some singular poacher's home or some drop off house. Like, I'd be curious to, like, talk to the Noah's Ark people more. to see kind of like, because I've, I've read two of the articles now. Like they don't, they mention some parts of the story, but they definitely don't mention like the, where the, they the exactly were found and like yeah. What I they wonder were if from. that. I wonder if that information has kind of been like we need the pre. Off, might, maybe legal but, reasons. You know, legal yeah. reasons. Like, yeah. Yeah. Tell, but like because it's only from well they f- found found so together kept together. 2016 is when they did the story, the story, and they had already been together 15 years. I assume like the yeah. legal actions had taken place by then, but some of those legal actions. So I'm assuming this happened all yeah. around like what 98 to 2000. Yeah, it would have had to have been like right around the early, yeah. late 90s, early 2000s. A bunch of big babies. Yeah, yeah a bunch of big cuddly babies. Um, My and baby. Then after that, it's kind of funny you guys brought up book, uh, <laughs> book there. Um, I do know that uh, Chuck and Rue have <gasps> just a little bit of a shout out for a little upcoming segment we might have here on 42 strains we do things we do things sometimes all right so some of you guys may remember that i don't even remember how long ago now because covid has totally warped time um (laughs) (laughs) but we did have i think two episodes of a stoner uh book club Epi- uh, podcast episodes I think. about two episodes i think, I think we, we, we had two. two episodes dropped a third maybe recorded uh, yeah i think we were going to and then we Possibly. found out that there was another podcast doing basically the exact same thing with basically the, the exact name. same name and we went oh that's a bad idea we should probably <laughs> hold up and kind of renoodle this thing uh before we get in trouble for stealing but somebody's anyway. idea that we didn't intend to steal so sorry about that so who noodled uh, you and I noodled. We noodled a Honestly, little. Honestly, you noodled. I wrote down. I and canoodled. Then, and then we we just refi- we refined it after a little bit, and we still have more work to do, but that's okay. Um, we turn grapes into wine. We do. We really do. Forty Two Strange is not making wine. We're it's not making more of just like maybe one day of like metaphorical process. Not metaphorical. Wine. Maybe one. Day. Maybe one day. <laughs> Forty Two finds. So I'm wet. <laughs> That's an idea, man. Sorry, Rue. No, you're Don't good. Worry. You are good. Um, so we don't have an exact timeline on when we'll get this going. We're still, like I said, we're still canoodling it. Um, maybe, maybe soonish. Maybe would, soonish. Um, yeah. But we want to bring the book club back, and we will now be 42 reads because you need 42 strains, 42 reads. But to add a little flair to it, because you got to have fun. I mean, it's it's literature. You got to play with it a little. Um, That's what she said. <laughs> so 42 reads. Live, laugh, and read with. I'm going to go with fantasy and weed for right now, but we'll switch out fantasy for whatever kind of genre we're doing. So you guys will catch the drift. Um, and I figure it helps you guys, you know, if you have a, a specific genre that you do like, if you're like, oh man, no, I don't do horror stuff. Like I get nightmares too easily and not go in there. Great. Then don't watch our, our, our horror themed ones. Um, if you, you know, if you have a genre you're trying to get into and you're like, cool, I want to try this sci-fi one. Jump in, man. We got sci-fi there. I'm going to make people read spooky shit. Oh, I'll watch your horrors. You can always email us, too, <laughs> with can. recommendations on books to read, segments Please. to do with the books, if you guys would like that. We we are at your whim. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah make family. me read something. That's if some hot business. Make reading me read is some sexy. shit. If we're reading a specific book and you've you got make a it theory, sexy? I said share reading it. is sexy. Reading, reading is, is sexy. sexy. I'm sorry. Do you see the glasses that come along with it? <laughs> oh, they can't you. see. I, I wear glasses <laughs> because I have an astigmatism, but I'll still give you the fuck me eyes with them on. I'll, that's all I need, baby. Baby. Thank you. Real hot <laughs> girls read books. <laughs> Coming from snacks, I'm gonna just say she's she's right. So deal with it. <laughs> Thanks. So our plan at this moment, this could fluctuate a little bit, but we're thinking an episode about every other month. That way, everybody's got some time to read. Because let's face it, yeah. we're stoners. We're we're not yeah. firing through books right away. Reading's hard, dude. And we've all got lives. You've got <laughs> okay, work. Let's You've got school. From reading You've sexy got... to reading's cute to reading's <laughs> fine. Real sick girls, sexy girls read. Reading's hard. <laughs> reading's hard. <laughs> reading Doctor Seuss is not hard. So let's. We might want to just rephrase that for you. <laughs> Reading past can be hard. Yeah. It can be hard. Can be hard. Pronouncing the word is harder. Yeah. Green eggs and ham. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, I we're probably thinking... I, we're gonna get sued. I just did it. I just I said Wait, that. And now we're gonna get sued. How, no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's the title of a book. Yeah, That's fine. The okay. title okay. Of a this is Doctor Seuss. For tra- this guy took oh, is, all this, this art stuff, from his wife. Is this like, all I think like this on lockdown? Company just is not start passed. saying the name wrong. It's Doctor <laughs> Zeus, and you're Zeus. not talking about the blue same eggs and ham. Yeah, it was brown eggs and ham. I heard you. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry, the episodes of 42 Reads will not be as chaotic as that. <laughs> or they, you, they will might be. be. I mean, it depends on what kind <laughs> yeah, of book we're reading. They Ooh. will be. Um, so, yeah, we're thinking about an episode every other month or so. To, um, depending on how bo- big the book is, we might do a full book an episode. We might have to break it down a bit. What if you guys get listeners what? emailing us back like, Best I can do is six months. Like we that's just it, got, that's all we I just got. got just the stones out there. Like no then, way. I'm then, doing you know what then you know what? I'll, I'll be like, I will right. come back to you in six <laughs> months, and I expect you. and I expect a full <laughs> breakdown synopsis of your opinion, and I will dedicate <laughs> not the my cliff notes. You. I don't want the cliff notes. No. I want to know in six months how this book has changed like, you. Touched you in the if past. you can't read that fast, just listen to the audio book. Same words. Same words. <laughs> I just when when Smash just the speaks, best ad for I listen. In general, I think I just and Thank I think you. just do an audiobook. Same words. Of, that's, audiobooks every helpful. audiobook commercial needs to say that now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just makes sense. Just listen, listen to her people. You'll probably better yourself probably. a little bit. The ideas coming the words out of this are podcast same. are just too fire. I don't Heck know. Yeah. People need to hear this. I'm telling you, spread it, spread it like wildfire. <laughs> So yeah, we will. We'll have to yeah get excited for that. We'll I'm have excited to for determine that. our first book. Once we do, we will announce it to you guys. And yeah, we'll have to figure out our little intro and everything for those episodes. Heck so yeah. give us time. We've got some some stuff together, but we're we're gonna try bringing it back, man. That was fun. I can't wait to listen. That's ah! gonna be fantastic. And you know what else is gonna be fantastic? Our last little segment of this episode. Oh which, goodness. Which is ah shit. Which is I've seen it described <laughs> as two different ways throughout our episodes. I, d- I still don't think we've really made a full decision on it. I've seen it as high scription and high splation. Oh. I think I think we need to make sure we make. I, I've been listing it as high splation. High splation. I feel like we are more because we explain the movie. it. We're not going along the script. Not yeah, we're not. We're explaining the movie Good, and how because we I'm going to jump around a little bit tonight. <laughs> seconds. Vampires. Uh, we go high splations. Um, snacks. That big beautiful bong is on That's you. On you, if oh, you would shit. like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you need to get ready for high splations because snacks is doing in high splations. Today. Oh gosh. And so is Rue. <laughs> We got the two. Why ladies. did I sign up for this? We got the two ladies doing high splations <laughs> this evening. Because we got um, a woman splain. Do you, you want guys. a Rochambeau I love or cinema. rock paper scissors <laughs> for cinema. um for who goes first? Or well, I think I volunteer? went first last edition of high splations. Did so, you? So Rue can go first this time. That seems fair. Someone volunteered the other. Okay. That seems and, fair. And, and, and I did. Right. Feet. That's Rue's right. Right. I, I bailed out on doing a high splation last time at all. So Rue, I'll take it. Why don't you go ahead and tell us? I'm actually bailing out because I just don't watch movies. I love cinema. We all know from previous episodes of this podcast that's just literally false what we there's so many so many things and references that make that statement false. um i i Um, would just i know one i know one okay unfortunately this is more of a visual one but it's the (laughs) i'm getting fat right now (laughs) um that's not really accurate no 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 not not double a accurate it's He's not getting fapped. He's more getting slapped from slapped. midair <laughs> by detached arms. Yes. Okay. Suicide Squad. Suicide thank Squad. You, you. I thought it was more of like a Thad. A Thad. Give me, <laughs> give me a ham no, and cheese. No, I haven't seen yeah. Thadland yet. Just give me yeah, a fap session, a fap in, the session in the ham and cheese room. I haven't room. seen Thadland yet. I need yeah, to. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah. Well, you just need to check out Blue Mountain State. I don't know if we'll get suited well, for I that s- too. Blue Mountain State's tight. I've seen Thad. that. I've seen the show. I have seen that. Oh, then yeah, you. you I just, need I just need to watch the movie. That. Yeah, like I'm, I'm literally missing out on the one part, and it's everyone says it's amazing. But anyway, you're not, but you're not high splaining that not, today because I Sorry. haven't seen it. What are you high splaining? I so Miss Fappy Fap Fapperson over there. <laughs> See, I'm getting fat. Told you. Now I'm the fapper. <laughs> the, fapper. The, mad, the mad fapper crew. The, the mad fapper. fapper. Man, uh, the title of this episode is going to be a tricky one. I've already got like four. We've ideas. got a few good ones. Um, okay, so the first time I did a high splation, I did Harry Potter in the Sorcerer's Stone. So today I'm Which is the first Harry Potter for those three yeah, people yes. that are listening that haven't seen Harry that Potter. That haven't seen. Or something. Or for oh, you of those across the pond, it is um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Hey, how dare you? What? How dare you? What? It's Not technically, my stone. It's technically the original Not my title. stone. I'm just saying. Not my stone. Um, just call it but <laughs> Not my Potter. Anyway, Potter. Um, 
<laughs> anyway, since I did that one last time, this time we're doing <laughs> Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. It just took a whole pandemic for this to happen. It did. It really did. You you let me know. Oh, oh. That, that sucked through. Because I'm doing that was the Chuck just ripping at the end the, of a bowl there. Here's the tray to pack. Yeah, because Rue does need to take a nice hit before doing the high splation. Oh, I do. That's right. Here, I'll empty Yeah, we need to get that. You. We need to get that prep for the high splation. Is that yucky? And and please, everyone, please like, yeah, don't just email us about random stuff either. Email us about stuff we ask you to email us about, like you know, recommendations on high splation, what Book movies to do, what books recommendations. Email us, tag us. The socials at the end of the episode. Look, if you have to fast forward. That tasted bad. That tasted bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck. It was yucky. My poor guy. Smell. It looked like hey. that episode when SpongeBob tries to taste Gary's food. And uh, oh, oh it, it like, it That's was like, really I was bad. like, oh, this is going to pull. Doesn't and then he it sick went, like the whole episode? And it was like that ass. His whole day was through. ruined. Yeah, it's like the whole day was absolutely done. Snail po. I'm packing, I'm packing. Yeah, just hit it and then like switch rotations so Chuck can get a good hit. Right on. <laughs> Thank you, Double A. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm gonna sneak in a peanut right now. Oh fuck yeah! And since we're talking about movies, you know, you guys could just send movie recommendations. Yeah, all the time. To we'll watch, do them. not even to review, but like just to watch. Tell me about what you're about. watching. Yeah, and like I said, you, if you have to fast forward to the episode to get to the social handles, please do so you can at least follow us. But you should just listen to the episode because they're pretty fun, and then get to the social handles and follow us on social media. I mean, media. I have fun. Yeah, we're having fun. Okay. We're having fun without you, those who aren't listening. Okay. I did it. I passed it. Just saying. It. And I don't know how you hear that, but feel it. Feel, it. feel the uh, burn. You let me know when you're ready, Rue, and I'll start this four-minute and 20-second timer to do I think Harry I'm as Potter ready as I'm going to get. All right. Three, two, one, go. So Harry actually has a room this year rather than being under the stairs, which is an improvement. Um, he gets a S Dudley's second bedroom, which you wouldn't know unless you read the books. Um, but he is now he now has a bedroom. Uh, he his family has the uh, guest coming over that Harry is not supposed to be around for because he is known as a troublesome child. So he will be in his bedroom making no noise and pretending that he does not exist until yes, Dobby right the house elf shows up <laughs> and decides to wreak havoc. Um, making way too much noise, totally gets Harry caught by his uncle, gets in so much trouble, he eventually has bars on his window um, and is told he's not going back to school at Hogwarts. Wait, but what about the other six movies? Hey, uh, sh 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 uh, we're not there yet. My That's next boy. time. Um, <laughs> anyways, so Ron and his two <laughs> brothers, Fred and George, who are twins in case you didn't know, uh, show up in a flying Ford Angular car. <laughs> Uh, and rip the bars off Harry's windows, save him from his aunt and uncle's house, take him away to the burrow. And oh my gosh, I gotta cap this bong. Um, <laughs> take him away to the burrow. He ends, gets to end the summer there. They go to Diagon Alley. They get to meet Gilderoy Lockhart, who is about to be their new defense against their arts teacher for the year, because of course there's a new one every year. Um, We're not there yet. They... The rest of the, the, that adventure is pretty standard for them, a pretty normal year uh, until they get to school. Um... Harry starts uh, hearing things, like uh, snaky-sounding voices, um, and nobody else can hear it. still in the first movie. I don't see it. <laughs> all the same. He's talking about snakes. Different voice. Um, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, he's hearing voices nobody else is hearing. Students and animals are getting petrified, and the adults don't know why. Nobody knows what's going on. Harry finds a journal that is writing back to him and then takes him into a memory to try and convince him that Hagrid is the bad guy. They go to talk to Hagrid. Hagrid gets arrested. While he's there, Dumbledore gets arrested. They're all off in Azkaban, and now it's down to the Golden Trio to try and figure out what the hell is going on at Hogwarts um, because it's not good. So they go into the Dark Forest. They swallow the spiders, which Ron absolutely hates. They swallow the spiders? No, no they go. They follow the spiders. They follow the swallow. Sorry. They follow Talking the too fast. Follow the um, they follow the spiders. I need a lighter. Um, thank you. Does anybody have a camera? Oh, so, many of us, so many of us reached for a lighter. Reached for a lighter. It was like emergency right lighter time. Two minutes. Right on. Um, they are able to find out that Hagrid is not the bad guy, but they end up getting chased out of the forest by the spiders. The car comes back and saves them. Harry is told by Dobby at some point that the Chamber of Secrets has been reopened, so now they know they can look into that. Um, I think their next big clue they get is when Hermione gets petrified, and she has the piece of paper from a textbook in her hand letting them know that there is a serpent and it is getting around through the pipes, and that is what is petrifying people. So now they know they have to find something with the pipes. Then Jenny goes missing, and there's uh, more. Oh, there's um, writing on the wall in blood that she has put up. This is not the first time the writing on the wall has uh, shown up, by the way. Um, 
But now Jen Ego is missing. We have no fucking clue where she is. Uh, and McGonagall decides it's time to send the kids home because Hogwarts is no longer safe. And Ron goes, that's not fucking good enough. I need my sister back. And Harry's like, fuck yeah, man, I'm with you. Let's do it. So they hear that Gildor but Lockhart is supposed to be the guy to go One and minute. solve all of this. Um, and they're like, that motherfucker can't do it. He's just a bunch of smiles. They go and chase him. They realize he's going <laughs> to run away. They force him to help him. They're able to find the opening to the chamber. They get in the chamber. The uh, Harry has to s- speak some possil tongue. Oh, they have to, Moni Myrtle helps him get in the chamber. Uh, <laughs> uh, chamber. Um, Harry has to speak some parcel tongue at one point. Ron and Harry get separated because Gilderoy Lockhart tries to do a memory charm because that's what he's known actually does and um, to get all of his stories because he doesn't actually do all the amazing things in his books. Um, and then Harry goes on alone, finds Jenny, fights Tom Riddle, uh, is able to somehow get out. Oh, the Phoenix helps him get out of there. And then, oh, you're talking about the, oh, you're topping Bulls hot. Oh, gotcha. Didn't want to um, sorry, I thought Didn't you were about the stabbing you. of the you got basilisk. 15 seconds. Right on. Um, they're able to fly out and then eventually uh, on the Phoenix and then Dumbledore and Hagrid come back from Azkaban and everybody's really happy at the feast. Yay! <laughs> One second left. Yes! <laughs> wow. I feel like I got a lot in there. I know I missed some you, stuff. You but got a lot in there. <laughs> I like how you went back and you were like, Money Myrtle. Oh, Money Myrtle, like, by the way. Yeah, I, I was just like, that the by the way, in the that second one. one. Yeah, yeah. They fl- that's how they get out, and that's how Harry gets cured from the the basilisk uh, puncture. I may be mistaken, but we didn't really go into the like real depths of how Voldemort and the Who's book Voldemort? and the. Oh, we didn't go deep into that. Well, they didn't understand <laughs> it yet. They didn't fully <laughs> grasp it. It's not until book seven, six or seven that we even realized how oh, fuck that was a. But horror I mean, did we even like, say he was in the? Did we even say that it was? I in? did say Tom Riddle. He fought okay. Tom Riddle. The chamber. Okay. Okay. He, he fought Tom Riddle in the chamber. That was really good. Thank you. Really nice. Good. <laughs> that was really good. <sighs> Please write in and let us know. How do you think she did? <laughs> How did I do? At, 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 I haven't at, watched that movie in a while. Only honestly. scales of one to three. Only yep. Only no scales of one to three. That makes my sense. High status. Oh, do you need um? No. Uh, the the, the snacks. Piece itself. What's that? Piece itself. Where is the? Oh, what the movie place. are you bringing to our high splation table this evening? This evening. I will be discussing, or I guess summarizing, uh, Jordan Peele's first film, or feature film, Get Out. Oh, goodness. Um, (laughs) I'm I'm here for it. (laughs) I was like, did I fuck that up? No. (laughs) He can't do it. He's got to leave. Do you need a a hit beforehand? Oh, I mean, I think so. Mm -mm, No, do this. Okay. Do this now. I need this. She's got a hit first. Do you need a Do you need a hit beforehand? No, I'm good. You're good. you're just ready to go. First. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of the thing though. It's kind of the thing to hit it right before going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that dead though? It's part of the yeah. tradition. That's dead. Keep yeah. It's all right. We can do. It. You if you haven't far. seen Get Out, it's by directed by Jordan Peele. And it's been by out for Peele. years. You guys should have watched it by now. Oh yeah, watch it. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty good movie. So watch it, and maybe suggest movies for us to watch. Guys and girls and others and theys and theys and thems. Like gosh. We just want to listen Gentle to you thems and, and, what's the and do late, things with you because we're a smoke babies, circle with something babies, to say. Babies, babies yeah. and gentle thems. Babies that's what it is. Thems. Oh, my gosh. That sounds like it's out of a Dr. Seuss book. It, 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 I have to. It's a bit of a puzzle to remember. Or out of a Winnie the Pooh cartoon. I have to go. Wait, where where does the them fit? Where does the. It, it takes me a second. Them and I'm also and high right doozles. now. So that makes it even more difficult. As good as that movie was, I can't wait to see Nope. I just saw. I was excited wonderful. once I learned it was aliens and not just like dust. I don't not know. The storm. first trailer heard, was just kind of. I heard, I like, heard it was like weather. Weather, the beginning, weather was the the enemy, and I was like, "We've been there before. I can't wait to see where this direction comes from." I was just like, "Okay." Thanks. I was like, "That's an interesting turn from what he's done previous to this." I was like, "Yeah, that's interesting." Aliens. I was like, "Okay." And then I heard there was going. like an M Night Shyamalama. This makes a bit. And then I was like, "Okay." Oh, yeah, the cornfield thing for sure. I think it was cornfield. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, bring it on. Oh. You okay? Hey, be careful. <laughs> Help. Hey, be careful. Don't die. I'm trying. You got a high splash. <laughs> Sounded like too. Rose looking for life uh, rafts. Sorry, ready? <laughs> Help. Sorry, I need water. Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> wait, wait, no, don't. That's you can't you can't use that song. Oh, that, that <laughs> Dude, damn it. It burns. <laughs> I've gotten this dude like three times already in this. How episode. dare you? What am I doing? Smoking <sighs> cannabis right. is going on. You ready? Three? Two, 
one, go. Okay, so the movie centers on a an American couple, a black gentleman named Chris and a white woman named Rose. They are on their way to go to visit Rose's parents for the first time. They're pretty early in their relationship, but they're going to go meet mom and dad and the brother uh, in Rose's hometown uh, in her uh you know, her, her uh, childhood home, the place she grew up in. So after, like, a inconvenient but not surprising run-in with the police, uh, they eventually get to Rose's parents' house, and it's this very big, nice, country-looking, like, southern-like house. Uh, and obviously, uh, when, when they get there, uh, the parents are very, very friendly. Chris is surprised by the place, and he finds out while uh, meeting the parents... I'm blanking on the names. They're both very fluent. Uh, the mother is a psychologist and a, psychi- a psychiatrist. The dad, I'm forgetting, some fucking... Uh, he's a surgeon, I remember now. He's a surgeon, a brain surgeon. Mm. And uh, they, they meet during dinner, and they're having just casual conversation where they learn about Chris and his child and his upbring- upbringing and about losing his mother at an early age due to a car accident. Um after an awkward dinner with the brother there, the brother just got back from college. He's studying to be a surgeon as well, and the vibes are not well. The brother is very southern <laughs> in his accent well. and in his, you know, not behavior, driving. and it's just very <laughs> awkward. Uh, there's kind of this weird making up of, like, the dad talking cringingly about voting for Obama for a third term, you know, just because Chris is black. And during dinner, they find out about, well, Chris finds out about uh, the housekeeper and the groundskeeper, both working for the family members, are black people. And he's very excited to meet them. But then he finds out after interacting with them that they are very strange in their demeanor and how they talk to Chris. Essentially, after uh, some activities and where there's a party where Chris has to interact with large groups of white people, um, essentially, oh, and an Asian man. Uh, he's just getting a passive aggressive, um, you know, uh, microaggressions one after the other, you know, regarding, you know, race, race. They're very racist directly, directly and point. like not Incredibly shamefully racist. at all racist. And essentially, you know, he's just getting bad vibes and he's talking to his friend that works for TSA about this whole situation. And the friend told him not to go in the first place. But the vibes are off. And right. every now and again, Chris is finding out that things of his are being touched and it's isolating him from the rest of the world uh, outside of this family. Things are getting even more aggressive after the really weird, awkward racial comments that he receives at the party. When during the party, there seems to be what was originally called bingo, a silent auction. And it's not clear what exactly is being auctioned until the camera zooms out on a large portrait of Chris. They are betting on Chris. We don't know why they're betting on Chris. Chris finally says he wants to go home, and Rose says she's going to help him go home, that they'll leave early. The parents don't seem very excited about it, especially because some of the weird shit that's happened. Chris has been hypnotized at one point after dinner with the mother. Ooh. Very traumatic. When they get back, Chris is trying to leave, and it's just not happening. There's obstacle after obstacle, and that's later when Chris is packing his own bags and is trying to call his friend again when he finds out that Rose has been lying. What's my time? One minute. One minute. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. He finds out that Rose has been luring (laughs) black people, whether they be men or women, back to the house. And he finds out through disturbing uh, information that Rose's parents are essentially doing these horrific experimentations on black people by taking old white people's brains and putting them in black people. And essentially they're they're kidnapping people in the process. And Chris is the next victim. After he's been knocked out and informed of all this information, Chris is able to escape and fight off the family members. Uh, when he's finally out of the house, he's attacked by the uh, housekeeper who actually is the grandma through one of the experimentations. He survives that. Rose tries to attack him, but Grandpa's able to get a hold of Chris. Chris uh, shocks seconds. him back into snapping into his original state where the poor innocent soul attacks Rose, shoots her, shoots himself. And just when uh, Chris is about to kill Rose, a police car shows up and turns out his friend got to him in time and Rose, that bitch, dies along with the rest of the family. Oh Racism. my God, it stopped. Woo! Wow. Nice. Wow. <clears throat> I've been holding in a cough for four minutes and 20 seconds. Wow. That was wild. 
racism the film that was absolutely wild snacks thank you for that four <laughs> minutes you. and 20 seconds felt oh like God. i was almost watching the movie again it i was, definitely felt some of these some moments of like oh, yeah. yeah i was trying to be detailed but like hit when the you went back to like eddie was hypnotized by the mother at one point i, like, know, <laughs> I forgot that and i was just like oh my god that happened right. before the party yeah. and you before the like, auction i got to bounce about back that. yeah absolutely man that was absolutely i gave you that one minute mark and you were just you Kick just that shit in the head i was just like oh my god i'm only halfway through the film this is on you whenever you're ready since you have to that was breath. phenomenal. <laughs> so when that I, was when I seen that movie the first time. I was just like, Jordan, don't end it this way. <laughs> don't end it this way. Don't. Want it. Thank you. There was an alternate ending that was I written by it. Jordan Peele. Oh no, really? It. And it it did not do well, and that's why it's an alternate ending. Oh. <laughs> it is a gruesome end oh. to that story that just makes you go. There is no hope. Yeah, like no winning yeah, all at all. No winning. It just touches so on reality a little too much. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Gotcha. Honestly, my th- the one from that movie is definitely when they're all at the party and then all of a sudden they all look up at the same time. I'm like, that is something that, else. That mm-hmm. moment was the one that gave me full body chills. Yeah, when I, I, watched. Like, I, wa- <laughs> I still get full body chills watching it, and I just watched it a few days ago with my friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely yeah. great movie. And that's when they lost their shit yeah. at that point, and they were very yeah, uncomfortable. I feel like that's very much a turn point for that move like, like not no climax or seat. anything it's just literally it's just like, like, like how, why are they all nope. silent? it changes your mood about that like yeah. it's it's that moment where it's like oh, oh we're on a ride settling. like buckle the fuck in like 100 yeah that one's absolutely oh, phenomenal and the desperation in chris's voice when he's just like give me my keys he's just oh, like where are the yeah. fucking where keys? are my the keys, keys? Well, then it's just like why aren't you giving me my keys? Yeah, just where are my fucking keys? Like yeah. you're just like, oh my god, that that the panic. And then when he pleads to her, like a more more innocent after that yell, and she just just stops fucking with him. She's like, it's right here. Yeah, they're right here. You know, I can't give you the keys, Chris. Yeah, Jeez. like all yeah. yeah, the charade is off. Ugh. Yeah, great, absolutely wonderful. Um, and that was our last segment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad <laughs> we got to leave you up on leave Get you Out. On. Racism. Um, I just thought that was cool, too, because like, I, I think it's different than some of the other movies we've done where it's like you kind of have to get stuff in there that's like so visually explained and not explained in words and like by spoken lines. So that was very cool. I really. I, that. I had to talk about the bingo cards for yeah, that Yeah, it's just that like yeah, certain yeah. images that it, you it put just, in the head. It took everything in my power for me not to just yell out, body swapping <laughs> when you were Yeah, and I was doing the, the full sprint motions though, like half the like, time doing the huh, gardener sprinting. Huh. Um, and then, yeah, please, guys, email us, follow us on social so you can recommend some future movies for us to do or just to watch in general. Like, we will totally take those serious. Email us at 42 strains at toke.com. Um, and that's pretty much all we have for you today. Just a nice little chill episode Ew. of some wacky news, some fun little news about future stuff going on with 42 strains, like the 42 reads, um, and some more high splations and bittersweet, you know, stories of lions and tigers and bears oh my <laughs> you know what what oh else, baby. what other show can you get all that in one place you know? <laughs> so, please check us out i hope you have a wonderful rest of whatever day or evening you're listening to us and have a great bowl blunt joint freaking snort if it's really what you're doing you know i can't control what you're doing <laughs> thanks for listening anyway and we'll talk to you later You can catch Double A on Twitter and Instagram at Double A Twelve Forty Two. You can follow this old dinosaur on Twitter at Surfer Dan. Just kidding, I was too slow to get that handle, but that guy's still pooping. I'm at Forty Two Strains. That's the number Four Two Strains. And over on Instagram, you can find me at Surfer Dan of Forty Two Strains. If you'd like to see what's going on with your girl snacks, you can go to Twitter and follow Snack Queen Twenty One. I repeat. Or come follow Chucky D over on Instagram at Chuck underscore Dante or Twitter at iHeartChuckadee.